it's the Jaden Show, and here's your host, Jaden Cornelius. Hi, welcome to this week's super special edition of The Jaded Show. It was meant to be my 50th interview where I have um, had the pleasure of interviewing Mr. Emerson, you and John. So you'll probably see that in a week or so's time, but I kind of wanted to do something different. Selfishly, because I feel the need to talk because, I, um, <laughs> because I'm actually quite um, saddened and, um, and floored by um, the event of our amazing um, Olivia Newton-John's passing. Um, so this show basically is about what she meant to me and what she meant to some other people as well. And um, I kind of started to script it and thought that maybe I should just write everything down. Um, and then I kind of didn't like writing it because it was a little bit sad and also it just felt really prepared and I didn't want to be prepared. I just want to talk. Olivia has been an amazing influence in my life for my whole entire life. I remember um, being an, an incredibly huge fan of her and Abba when I was not even five years old. I was born in 1973 and my memories, I remember Greece coming out. I remember my dad um, who's also passed, um, hopefully he's having a good chat with Olivia now. Um, I also remember him coming to speak to me one night, I think it was in one day in 1979, saying, got a super special treat for you. Super special treat for you. We're going to see Grease at the cinema. I cried like a complete ninny. I didn't want to go, I was so shy, I couldn't deal with seeing Olivia Newton-John and John Travolta on a big screen. It intimidated the life out of me. And it really wasn't a pleasurable experience. I was just so beyond shy of them. It was unbelievable. It probably wouldn't have surprised me that I had to watch her videos on um, TV through the crack in the door because I was so shy, because I was so in love with her. I don't know if I was in love with her or I wanted to be her, but I did know I had a connection with her and she was one of my main icons and we kind of remained that way through the whole of my life actually there was a space where she was kind of off the scene for quite a while i think dealing with her you know her first her first um temporada was temporada, like her first um, installment i guess of breast cancer i'm losing my english living in mexico i'm so sorry and um and so she went off the radar for a bit so i kind of being a teenage kid continuing my life kind of forgetting about everything really i do also remember um spraining or damaging my neck um because i know there was a video to um, a little more love where um she kind of at the beat of the like nice dragging her feet do mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. and she would do that with her head and i done it with such force and passion that i ended up straining my neck and being in um, excruciating pain and i remember my dad being quite embarrassed by this <laughs>
Olivia just has always been part of my life. If you saw me in the early 80s, I was the only boy in my street with strap-on roller boots, like roller skates that you used to strap to your shoes, going up and down the path in front of the house because of Xanadu. You know, she... I've never been quite the normal boy, to be honest, but um, but she was a major influence in, in so many parts of my life. And... Um, I was really, really blessed as an adult to know her more than a lot and to also know her less than many as well. But I remember reading her book, um, her, I think it was like the non-official biography, autobiography kind of thing. And it really had, had amazed me that someone so beautiful, so successful, so rich, could possibly suffer how she suffered with, you know, her marriages with her um, koala blue business going down the drain with, and then with her health, well, losing her father, like we all lose parents, but you kind of, I kind of um, was really ignorant to the fact that stars ever particularly suffer because of who they are. And um, they always, there's a team of people, therapists, doctors, best clinics, blah, blah, blah. And you kind of realize the fragility of us all um, when you read that someone that you put so high on a pedestal um, had also suffered so much. So I decided, what can I do to help? Like, I had no idea. I just felt completely moved by her story. I didn't know her on any level. I had no expectations of meeting her or ever meeting her, really. And I wasn't even doing it to meet her. I was just so compelled by that book to doing something to help. I'd lost my father a good few years earlier to leukemia, blood cancer. And um, I kind of just felt I needed to be doing something to stop wallowing in my life and to start looking at what I can be doing to help others. So I decided, well, I haven't sung for a very long time and I really miss singing. So I want to find people who say that, who think that they can't sing, who are scared to have a voice. Um, but actually really want to sing. And I'm going to teach them 30 Olivia Newton-John tracks. And then we're going to tour it wherever we can tour it to raise, for six months to raise money um, for, it was Emerson Newton-John's For Speed to a Cure for the, um, the Olivia appeal and for our breast cancer cam other breast cancer campaign as well. Hey there, I'm Jaden Cornelius and um, I'm currently working on a tour called Only Olivia. With some friends of mine, um, we're going to go across the whole of the southwest UK and maybe even further afield, raising money for Emerson Newton John's Full Speed to a Cure campaign for the Olivia Appeal and also for breast cancer care. So, um, this is a little bit of um, some of the stuff that we're doing.
around here Little more than I should We both know I've got somewhere else to go But I've got something to tell you That I never thought I would And I believe you really ought to know I love you, I honestly love you You don't have to answer, I see it in your eyes Maybe this was better left unsaid But this is pure and simple Realize that it's coming from my heart and not my head. I love you, I honestly love you. I'm not trying to make you feel uncomfortable. I'm not trying to make you anything at all But this feeling doesn't come along every day And you shouldn't blow the chance When you've got the chance to say I love you I honestly love you If we both were born in another place in time This moment might be ending with a kiss And there you are with yours And here I am with mine so I guess we'll just be leaving it at this I love you I honestly love you I honestly love you If you already want to start donating some money, then click on www.jadencornelius.com and you can donate on the links there. See you later.
So I did that and that was an incredible experience on both good and bad levels. Some very disturbed people um, came into my life and also some amazingly beautiful people came into my life. The tour was incredible. The tour was absolutely amazing. Just met the most loveliest people on the planet. People that, you know, it's amazing when, when you're doing something that's kind of um, centered around um, cancer. The stories that you hear, people say, oh, you know what, um, I've never had breast cancer, but I'm, I'm actually recovering from a, a brain tumor, or um, I don't have breast cancer, but my mum had it and my sister had it, or I've just finished chemo, or I've just finished radiotherapy. And um, these um, these stories and these kind of these sharings were just beyond um, beyond therapy, just the most amazing connection with the most amazing. We're going to find this in our life. We even had a fraction of this that I think our lives and the lives of many other people will be just absolutely fantastic.
And then a really amazing guy, um, him and his wife are, are really, really super good friends with Olivia and John. Meshima said, Olivia's coming to England. She hasn't been to England to, for ages. So really bizarre that she happens to be coming to England the year that I'm doing this. I wasn't particularly following her and had no idea. So I went to a meeting to see her on stage talking about Amazon um, her products with her husband, John. And then all of a sudden, I arrive and I get asked to go into a room with many other people and um, and this guy says okay okay Olivia and John are gonna be here in five minutes so I'm like what the I, I can't meet her like she's my idol <laughs> and I kind of looked at the table that I was sitting around and the only two seats available were directly opposite me at the other end of the table so now I'm going through menopause and I start sweating and I feel faint so I have to take my, my my jacket off and I had to keep putting my arms on the cold part of the seat because I'm thinking I can't do this like this is Sandy from Greece this is Kira, Kira from Xanadu like I can't I had no idea that I was meeting her 
with this group of people that I don't know. And I'm not very good in, you know, kind of social settings where I don't know people. I do get very shy and intimidated very often. And all of a sudden I heard the door open and I had to literally look at my glass of water in front of me as these two people sat down somewhere in front of me. And bit by bit, I kind of could look up like this and I was like, oh my God, that's Olivia Newton-John. Like it all happened so fast. I'd gone from like not really doing anything just to learning her songs and teaching people her songs into her. And then all of a sudden I'm sitting opposite her in a board meeting, like just unbelievable. And then to make it worse, like I can sing pretty much now in front of anyone. I don't like speaking in front of people, believe it or not. The camera's an amazing um, buffer for me, but not very good at uh, group conversations and speaking in public. So then we all had to stand up and introduce ourselves. And I was like, I'm gonna faint even just sitting here. Like, I really don't think I can do this. So when it came to me, I just stood up and went, hi, my name's Jaden and I'm an alcoholic. And then she and I went, oh, shit, am I in the wrong meeting? And everyone just looked at me, including Olivia and John, as if to say, you're not right, are you, darling? <laughs> it was that kind of look like, okay. There was a, you know, some people did laugh, obviously, because I'm amusing. But there was this whole kind of like, shit, like, I really don't know what to do. But the meeting went great. It was really lovely to meet both John and Olivia. And it wasn't the last time that I got to meet them. I was very lucky to go and meet them again. And it's quite interesting. Well, I used to call her Mrs. E because obviously she was married to John Easterling. So I would say, hey, Mrs. E, how you doing? Um, and I went back to meet her again the second time. Um, and I was really excited because I thought we've connected now. Like we're mates, we're mates. And then I was in this meeting and she just walked completely past me and my I just felt really deflated and really low. I was like, shit, actually I still don't really exist to her and that's that's a little bit sad. And then she came back into the room and she went and she pointed at me and walked in front of 150 people, just walked straight up to me and gave me a hug and asked how I'm doing. Now, I didn't know whether to laugh, cry, or <laughs> she just hadn't seen me. And I was just completely moved by her grace, by the way she made people feel so desperately special. Like she was just, they say, and I know this has been said many times, you know, don't contact your idols. Don't meet your idols because they will hugely disappoint well olivia exceeded all my expectations she was one of the most beautiful gracious talented just and she was like an angel she was just absolutely amazing she made me a little boy from west london who was becoming you know uh, uh who was an adult she still made me feel extremely extremely special and then we had to, for some reason, stand in a circle, I remember, and hold the hands of the people that we're standing with and then explain why we are holding the hand of the person to the left. The person to my left was Olivia Newton-John. The person to my right was a wonderful woman called Marcy. Marcy said something along the lines of, I'm holding Jaden's hand because he's a cute little English boy or something like that. And I was like, God, how can I speak and say why am I holding Olivia's hand? So I held Olivia. I said, I'm holding Olivia's hand because secretly I was hoping there'll be a six foot muscle bound, hairy chested hunk to hold hands with, but I don't see any in this room. And Olivia was the closest person, so I just ended up holding her hand. You know, she, did. <laughs> she just laughed at me and she, with that kind of, yeah, you're a little bit crazy, Jaden, but you're all right, mate. You're all right. Um, and she was so gracious and I had a letter from her telling me um, that one day she would do a duet with me and um, thanking me for we, me and the team, the guys that I um, took on tour, we'd raised in the first two, I think we'd raised over about 12,000 pounds. It's not a lot, but you know, we were just a little group of people traveling around doing what we could do, selling tickets for a fiver, you know, so we made like 12,000 um, pounds, I think for the breast cancer. And then 10 years later, we've done another little show 
just to raise a little bit more money. I can't remember how much you raised the second time around off my head, but just to raise a bit more money for the same charities um, to give to the guys because it was our 10th anniversary and it was just such an amazingly humbling and beautiful experience that we wanted to celebrate that 10 years later. I can't believe it's kind of so long ago. So Olivia meant a lot to me. I was so blessed to have met her, so blessed to, yeah, just to kind of meet her, like, not popping around the house for a coffee, although maybe we would have done at some point because we got on really well and I think there was, you know, a little bit of a understanding and a connection there. Um, I got a lovely letter from her. I got a lovely phone message from her and she messaged me um, to ask how my career was going and I lost touch with her when I moved to Mexico, so seven years ago. We didn't have any more contact. But that's kind of my, um, I just, I feel really, really, really gutted. Like I could quite easily cry now actually because I always had a dream and my main focus was one day and not just because I'm a supporter and a fan, just because her, her music inspired me, her story inspired me and I was like one day I'm going to sing a duet with that woman. I don't need it to be televised. I don't need to earn a penny from it. I just need to sing with a woman that inspired me to sing, you know, and we can, you know, make the record available for all her breast cancer charity um, uh, campaigns. I just really believe that. And it was re that was kind of like through my whole adult life, that was the thing that continued to keep me focused on my career, you know, is, a really um, soul damaging industry you know there is unbelievable amount of competition I was so lucky to have got where I got in the 90s with you know my group beyond and as a solo artist you know having record deals and you know, teenage magazines and stuff like that but um, as an adult as a serious singer I really wanted um, to achieve and the, re the, the thing that got me refacing um, disappointments and kept me focused in my way ahead was one day I'm doing that duet with with Olivia when I get famous enough I'm doing that duet and unfortunately I never got famous enough to do that duet and then it became a little bit more of that that whenever I whenever I didn't feel that I was particularly doing the right thing or on the right path or I had self-doubt or you know I didn't or I didn't believe that I had the energy or the strength or the passion to keep going forward or to do the things that I love to do I would just be in some random place like it might be a supermarket or even as I've been in Mexico I've been like in a taco in a taqueria in like a taco place and all of a sudden physical or hopelessly devoted or summer nights has just come on the radar and been like CJ that's a sign man that's a sign you've got to keep doing what you're doing you've got to keep doing what you're doing man and she became almost even while she was still alive like my little guardian angel I just you know the weirdest ass places that I would expect to hear a Livy Newton John song a Livy Newton John song came on the radio or was played on the the tannoy or the PA system and that was like my no nah, man, you've got to keep doing what you're doing. And I never got a chance to do that duet. And that that kills that's like another dream gone. And I guess one of the things about getting older is you start to lose every person around you, right? Until it's your time on that list. As morbid as it sounds, it's also completely the truth, you know. I'm getting older. Olivia wasn't that old you know, but she'd been through so much and had suffered so much and, you know, still portrayed, I don't know her in public behind closed doors, but still portrayed the type of person that held on to her spirituality, held on to her connection with the universe and with energy, you know, and through it all kept strong and kept faith and, you know, never gave in, she never gave in. I've been really blessed to um, to be able to chat to Emerson Newton John, and you know I've met so many amazing people through Olivia, um, Warren Ham and Steve Rial, and you know. Um, so I just kind of wanted to um, 
to thank you guys because when I was doing the Olivia tour, the Olivia fans were so bloody supportive and amazing. So I just thank you guys so much um, for your support um, because of what I was doing. And you, you Olivia fans are amazing, absolutely amazing. The tributes and the messages that I've been seeing across social media have been healing because I kind of felt that I was feeling a lot of this on my own, you know, and to realize that a lot of you, a lot of us are going through that same grief. Like I always knew that I'd be upset by her passing, but I never knew it would hurt as much as it hurts. That's kind of really bizarre to me. And there's been lots of people that I've admired that I've, you know, that have, have died. You know, it's just kind of, that's life, right? But I never imagined to feel like this over Olivia's passing. And that's why I was so needing to do this Jaden show tribute to Olivia Jaden's therapy session, because I just needed to talk about how I'm feeling. And I also needed to share with you, like as, as tacky as it may seem, you know, I still was so blessed to be able to sing a lot of Olivia's songs on that tour and to record The Water Is Wide on my last album. And I just wanted to play them to you. And I really want to show you the photos that I took um, when I saw her in concert, both in Cardiff and at the Royal Albert Hall.
Shh.